Alright guys, welcome again to our channel and uh, I'd like to share a little update with you guys which is a pretty big win for us. So this flash flooding that you can see behind me here is a ginormous puddle and uh, I was hoping that it might start to go away on its own but it really isn't, it's holding water just superbly well. So while like some people have mentioned in the comments in the last video uh, to use a pump to pump it out. I was thinking the same thing until I woke up at 5.30 this morning going, why don't we use a siphon? And while a 100 meter long siphon might be normal for some, for me, I've never done that before. It was a pretty phenomenal win. Maybe for some of you guys, that's pretty cool as well. So I'll show you quickly the setup that I've done here. So this is the puddle. It's actually quite beautiful with the sky reflecting in the background, but Basically, this used to be a dip and now the water can't go that way anymore, which is a bit of a bummer. So until we set up the drainage here, we have to get rid of this puddle somehow. It's going to stay here forever. So what I've done was I stretched a pretty long line of one inch poly pipe, just because one inch is a bit easier to fill with water for the siphon to work. And this is a star picket. And I basically tied the bottom of the pipe to the star picket so now it's underwater it's at the lowest point and it's sucking up water and now <clears throat> this one inch poly runs all the way down over there and into the dam so let's go take a look at that next So while that might not be the fastest flow in comparison to a petrol driven pump, we are using 100% laws of nature. We're using the laws of physics here to transfer water from almost 100 meters away using just a bit of poly pipe. There's no pump running. We're not using any fossil fuels. We don't have to keep checking on the pump. We don't have to worry about whether the inlet of the pump will start sucking up dirt over there when the level of the water gets low because if dirt gets into this pipe, that's no worries, we flush it out. If dirt gets into your pump, all the sediment can, can ruin a pump essentially. So uh, it's pretty cool. We're, we can leave this going for days now until that puddle's dry and then we just move it on to the next puddle. And it's a very hands-off kind of way to transfer water over semi-long distances. Uh, the most important thing is that um, the point where the water's being uh, pumped from or sucked from uh, the point where the water is going needs to be lower. So we've only got a fall of maybe two meters here running over a span of 100 meters and that was sufficient. So uh, once again, pretty big win for us. Maybe some of you guys do it all the time if you are pros, but yeah, maybe for a lot of us, we haven't done a 100 meter siphon before and this is a pretty cool experience to see it working. And here's a quick look over our dam. Oh, and uh, apologies, I almost forgot to let you guys know how the siphon was set up here. So one way to do it is if you plug the end of the pipe there with something, what you can do is back at the other end, you can just keep slowly tipping water into the pipe until it's full. And then when you release the plug here, the water will just keep coming out and the vacuum that it creates as it's coming out of this end will pull the water from that end and essentially that's how, uh, what creates a siphon that's how that works but what i did um there's a little pond behind the dam as well so uh, i stretched another length of uh, one inch poly pipe from the pump over there and so i was essentially pumping water from the pond up through this pipe all the way down there to the puddle so that's how I filled the pipe with water quickly. And then over here, I just undid the joiner that connected the two pieces of pipe. And once I undid the joiner, uh, water just started coming out and essentially the siphon was set up. And then I just turned off the pump and 
left it running down there like that. Alrighty, so we'll show you our high-tech setup. So we've got some poly pipe here, a little piece of rope, and a star picket. <laughs> so that's all we need here. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go into the water and find the deepest point, and uh, obviously the weight of the picket will hold down the poly pipe so that it uh, keeps suctioning the water when it's at the bottom. So let's go on in. Alrighty, so we found the deepest point here near the driveway. It's almost knee deep, and we'll just plop the pipe down. And we don't want the pipe to be touching the bottom because then it might just get clogged up too quick. So I'll put something under it. And yeah. Happy with that. Let's go set up that pump and get the siphon going. All right. So that's it getting started there. And if the pressure's not sufficient, or if an air pocket gets in the way. What we're gonna do is we're gonna connect this one back on and put the pressure back into there. So this time around, it didn't work. So we're priming it again. <laughs> that looks better. Oh, it's lined out again. Feel the air bubbles coming out. So it looks like our siphon is most likely set up now. Awesome. Got water pouring in from down there. But we'll see how we go. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot better this time. Oh. It's failed again. <laughs> so we'll just make sure all the air pockets come out. So we'll just pump into that puddle for a while now. And then once the air pockets come out, we should be able to disconnect this. And our siphon will be set up. Never seen bush shoes. This is what they look like. Very fancy, very be beautiful. And I think we may have set up a successful <laughs> this time. So I got mud shoes on too. Oh no, mine have washed off. I've I'll lost have to mine. Wash mine off. But yeah, look, it's working. Took a few goes, but we got there in the end. I think. We'll keep an eye on it, but. I'll give you guys a bit of uh, info as to uh, why this one is a bit more of a struggle than the last one that I set up. So basically the last one I set up, the puddle was here and the dam level was here and the hose went straight from the puddle into the dam. But now we've drained this puddle here and now I've got the driveway and we've got a puddle here. So basically the water from this puddle had to go up over the driveway a little bit. And so that bit of elevation is what created the dramas for us because I think what was happening is the fall on this end right here wasn't enough to create enough force to get the water up over that little hump and so maybe we just had an air pocket somewhere maybe something else happened but in comparison to the first puddle it was very easy to prime this one took like five goes but now it's running and we're not going to touch it now <laughs> and Alex got a free shower free shower this morning with this beautiful damn water <laughs> <laughs> Still going. Success. Alrighty, taking one final look at this section, we can see that the bulk of the water is now gone and it's just a little puddle remaining, which is fine. The sun's going to crisp that up nicely and basically the siphon has worked. So this side here as well, just a little puddle left after we had a sprinkle the other day. But the bulk of the water is gone, so we're definitely going to try the siphon solution again if this area floods again. Obviously in the long term there's going to be drainage set up and this problem won't be a problem anymore. But it was pretty cool to see that a siphon can actually be set up to span for 
you know, I think it's 70 meters here from the puddle, the furthest puddle from the dam. So that's really cool. And we had it running day and night, basically. Didn't have to look over it like we would with a pump. And the next thing we knew, the area was uh, dry. So both sides took 48 hours each to drain though. So it is pretty timely. And yeah, success. We've gotten rid of the water and now to have a think about how we're going to design the drainage so that this area doesn't flood again. So there we have it guys. We drained these two puddles using just the power of nature. And we finished just in time for a storm to come in and half fill the puddles all over again. It's always great fun working out here on the farm. And fun fact, up until only 2014, the world of physics was still debating the principles that governs water siphoning. It was previously thought that it was atmospheric pressure that was behind the seemingly magic reality of siphoning, but in 2014 it was finally concluded that siphoning happens as a result of molecular cohesion, regardless of atmospheric pressure. Or to put this more simply, the water flowing down the slope has more energy than the water that doesn't have a slope to flow down and it basically pulls it along through the pipe towards the lower end. Just like this example of two carts on a rail track where the heavier one will determine the direction of movement. And I know we've been promising videos about the bore drill and the install of the solar bore pump which are in the making but all this rain prompted an urgent response to some erosion problems and in the next video we'll be tackling those with just a shovel, wheelbarrow and some monster weeds and doing some bioengineering on a budget to stabilize slopes from being washed away during heavy rain downpours and using just native vegetation to fix everything. We do a successful siphon, Luna. Give me Good girl.